Hello world, welcome back to another Hacker Rank Python challenge video. In this video, we're going to be solving the minion game. Let's get into it. Given a string, judge the winner of the minion game. All right. Kevin and Stuart want to play the minion game. Game rules. Both players are given the same string S. Both players have to make substrings using the letters of the string S. Stuart has to make words starting with consonants. Kevin has to make words starting with vowels. The game ends when both players have made all possible substrings. Oh, okay, so we're not just dealing with words, which would be kind of difficult, right? It's just any combination of substrings. So a player gets plus one point for each occurrence of the substring in the string S. Okay, so they're not factoring out duplicates here. A duplicate counts as a point. String S equals banana, for example. Kevin's vowel beginning word equals A and A. Here, A and A occurs twice in banana, hence Kevin will get two points. All right. Your task is to determine the winner of the game and their score. Complete the minion underscore game in the editor below. Okay, so they have the main function blocked off, so we are just dealing with this minion game function. The winner's name and score separated by a space on one line or draw if there's no winner. Okay, so basically if Kevin's is greater than Stewart's, or not Kevin, the space in his score, and Stewart, as it shows here, Stewart obviously won in this example, so he gets a score of 12. Cool. Now this may seem like it's a bit difficult, but I think it'll make sense when we get into it. Basically, when we're dealing with numbers, there's a mathematical way of doing this. So let's focus on Kevin since there's less iterations we have to worry about or substrings we have to worry about. It'll be a little bit more consolidated, right? So you may be thinking, okay, we need to do a for loop. And you're right, we do need to do a for loop. But, you know, we're not going to have like a substring variable that we're piling on each iteration. We're concatenating another letter from the original string onto to make each substring and then looking in the string for that substring. We're not going to do we're not going to do that. Like I said, there's a way to do this mathematically and you'll see here in a second. So firstly, I believe we have some constraints or a constraint that we need to take care of. So if the length of our string is not in range of zero to, I believe that's one million. So one, two, three, four, five, and then one, of course. Then we're gonna say print length of length of string must be inclusively between one and one million. All right. So that takes care of our constraint. So now we can dive into the actual logic. We do want to loop through each character, of course, because how else are we going to determine whether they're substrings or not? Now, we can divide up substrings with slicing, but again, we're going to do this mathematically. So we're going to say for i in range of zero to the length of the string to start with. And why don't we go ahead before anything else as well to go ahead and give our our characters here are some scores that we can increment, right? So Stuart count, sure, why not? Stuart count equals zero, we'll say Kevin count equals zero. And now we kind of got our baseline set up here. Now let's actually kind of dive into the logic we want to work with on this, right? We're going to be, let, let's take our example word here, right? Banana. And let's take Kevin, like we said before. So if we're doing Kevin, our first letter we come across is going to be an A. So we're going to have A, and then A-N, and then A-N-A, and then A-N-A and N, and then A-N-A and A. And that's going to be when I is 1, I is and then I plus one, which will be two, obviously. And then that'll be I plus two, as far as slicing is concerned, right? We wanna keep track of these indexes. Then I plus three, and then I plus four, 
Now, do you notice something here? So remember, these are all the substrings you get if you we come across A first, right? Because it's just compiling each character after the other onto itself, essentially, right? Five is the length of this substring. Isn't that kind of interesting? Let's take our next instance of A, right? So we'll do A when I equals, and I believe that's three. So then we'll have A in again. So I plus one, which is equal to four. And then A in A which I plus two equals five. Notice how there's three iterations of this and the final length of the substring is three, kind of like up here, right? There's five iterations of substrings possible here. And then that ends up being the length of the final substring. So here we have five, here we have three, and then of course the last one, A, which is when I equals five. Do you see the pattern here though? Remember our final score is nine, right? If we do, right, if we do, and you can look at pretty much any of these for this, right? I starts at one and then I is three and then I is five. If you do one plus three plus five, you get nine. Same thing if you were just to compare the length of the final substring, right? So five plus three plus one is still nine. Okay, so we have kind of an algorithm we can work with here, right? So all we're going to do is first of all, check if string at i is in a, e, i, o, u, right? So if our character is an A, an E, an I, or a U, right? Because that's what that N does. It'll just say, hey, is this character in this string or list or whatever data type you have after the N operator, right? And that's a membership operator. Remember, we gotta check that because we have to know if it's either Kevin or Stuart that this score belongs to, and this will we'll check for Kevin first. Then we're gonna say, Kevin count plus equals, and this is, Kind of where this calculation comes in at we're gonna say the length of our final substring whoops i typed that in completely wrong the length of our final strong substring right just think about it as we're going through the string right we're going to be looping through we're going to go b and then a right and then so this condition will pass on a and then it's going to say kevin count plus equals length of the string of our current index, which is one, right? Which is what we started with up here, one, to the end of our banana string, right? Which would be A and A and A. That would give us five, right? The first time, when index, when I is one, that would give us five. Then when we hit the second A, which is where I is going to be equal to three, we're going to get the length of the sum string from three to the end, right? So three to five, but the length of that substring is still three. So then we have five plus three, and then we have the final A, which is just one index, right? So length of one, five plus three plus one is nine. It's the same deal with Stuart. Let's, let's just take a look at Stuart real quick. We'll talk it through. I won't write it down, but we'll talk it through. We start with B, B A N A N A. So the whole sub, a substring can still count as, or the whole string can still count as a substring. At least they count it here. So that's six. And then the next one is in, right? And then the length of the longest substring is a better way to put it, right? The length of the longest substring there is four, N, A, N, A. So six plus four, 10. And then you get to the next in. So it's just N and N, A, which so, the length of the longest substring there is two. So the way you want to look at it, I guess, is the length of the longest substring starting from the index that you're at for that character is going to be accumulated to your score. 
each time you reach another character uh, that's either an, a vowel or a consonant, depending on which character you're doing. Or, sorry, which person you're doing it for, right? Because Stuart is consonants and Kevin is vowels. So we're gonna say else, right? Because we don't need another condition. We can just increment Stuart the same way we increment Kevin. And that's just the length of the string. Sorry, the length of the substring, right? From the current index to the end of the string. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me in the comment section down below. I know that may have been a little confusing, but hopefully I explained that well enough for you to understand it. Anyways, that should take care of getting our scores, right? So now we just need to check to see who won. And that's that's the easy part. If Stuart count is greater than Kevin count, then print Stuart space. And don't forget, we need to convert the integer to a string, Stuart. And then elif, right? Because we don't want to do a separate if check for this. Elif Stuart, or Kevin count is greater than Stuart count. We're gonna do print Kevin. And convert that to a string as well. And then finally, if it's anything else, then it has to be a draw, right? I think this is right. I think this will do it. Let's go ahead and run the code. And we passed the sample test case. So let's see if we pass every case. Interesting. We have a time limit constraint that didn't pass. Hmm. Well, that sucks. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, slicing is a pretty hefty process. It does take a pretty good amount of time to do. So maybe there's a different way we can get the same value that we're trying to go for. I mean, we have the calculation up here, so why don't we just come up with a different method instead of slicing? Okay, so I think we should still, you know what? Why don't we just take this in a backwards approach? Instead of saying the length of the longest substring, right? Why don't we just do some algebra, some manipulation, right? So we know that the length of the longest substring is going to be what's added to our total. How can we get that though? If we take the length of the full string and subtract the index, we essentially get the same value without having to do the slicing, which is what's failing in this processing time, right? I assume that's what's failing in this processing time anyways. There's nothing else that we have here that would be super strenuous on the timer, or that could be super strenuous on the timer. Like I said, and we'll go ahead and write it up here, length of banana, which is, you know, obviously six, minus the index, which will be one, three, and five, right? Should give us so I win, it's equal to one, three, or five. I should put it like that. Yeah, it's a bit confusing to read, but you get the gist, right? Six minus, oh, we can just, here we go, we can put this one, three, and five will get five plus three plus one, which will still give us nine. I hope that makes sense. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below or ping me on the Discord server. Why don't we just go ahead and do that length of, in this case, string minus our index. Isn't that cool how we see by writing this out, we kind of developed a new way to answer the question. Well, not a new way, an alternative way that requires less processing power. And we should get the same result. Yes, we did. And with any luck, all our test cases passed. Yes, 
So it was our slicing that was causing our failed time checks, as we suspected, right? I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, show your support, turn on post notifications to get regular content injected into your feed. Check out our Discord and Patreon links in the description box down below and leave any feedback or questions in the comment section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.